Let's open up the file with tests called activities.test.ts and take a look at the first test. Since we have moved common functionality outside of these tests and put it in the describe block which wraps these tests, there is also another piece which is pretty similar, which we can also extract. It is this declaration of activity object. We can see it in the first test as well as in the second one. And now let's remove declaration of this object from the second test and see if our tests are still passing. So far so good, but in fact we have the same declaration of this object inside the last test in this file. So why don't we reuse the same activity object for all tests in this file? Let's try it out. I'm gonna remove this declaration from the last test. And to be able to use single activity object for all tests in the file, we have to move this declaration of activity object outside of the describe block and put it at the top level of the file. So it's available in absolutely all test enclosures of this file. But surprisingly, if we'll take a look at the status of our tests, we're seeing that some of them are failing. And specifically, it is the last test of activities.test.ts file. And the reason to that is because when we were calling update activity function inside the first test, it has mutated the first activity object that we have passed as the first argument into this function. Which means by the time the second test gets executed, the original activity object will be already mutated and will contain different value inside seconds to complete property. Because the first test has modified this property. And this is the reason why these assertions from the last test are failing. So we have to find a way to reset this activity object back to its original property values before executing every test. And fortunately, Vitas provides us with several hooks where we can run this kind of logic to reset activity object. One of such hooks is called before each. It has to be imported from the Vitas library and this hook accepts closure as the first argument. And this closure is going to get executed before every test in this file. So, I'm gonna move declaration of activity object inside of this closure. And since this closure will be executed more than once, because we have more than one test in this file, I'm gonna have to use normal variable instead of a constant. So let's move declaration of the variable outside. And here we'll keep only the assignment. So now, when we're gonna run tests in this file, this closure is going to be executed once per test at the beginning of every test. Let's make sure that this is really the case. I'm going to output something in the terminal and expect to get this output three times because in this file we have three tests. And sure enough, in the terminal we are seeing three logs. Besides this before each hook, we also have several others such as after each. It works in the same way. But instead of executing the logic before every test, it executes disclosure after every test in this file. So we're still going to see three logs in the terminal, but they are displayed after execution of every test. In addition to these hooks before each and after each, we also have before all and after all. And these hooks are different from the previous two in the way that they are not executed once per test, at the beginning or at the end of every test, but they are executed only once. Before all hook is going to run the closure only once before all tests in this file are executed, and after all hook is going to run its closure after all tests are executed. Which is why we're seeing only two logs in the terminal, one from before all hook and the other one from after all hook. But besides using these hooks at the top level, we can also put them inside describe blocks. And this way they're gonna be applied only to tests inside the describe block. So to run a particular piece of logic only before all tests in a particular describe block, we have to place before each hook inside the describe block, like this. And because we have only two tests 
in this describe block we're going to see before each lock twice in the terminal. So now that we have solved the problem of resetting activity object before executing every test in this file, let's remove unnecessary imports and check all tests in the project. As we can see, they are all green. Link to the source code of this lesson will be in the video description.